Type 2 diabetes mellitus. What is it and steps to be healthy? Type 2 diabetes mellitus is one of four metabolic disorders noted for high levels of sugar and glucose in the blood. It involves carbohydrates, fat, and protein metabolism. Metabolism is a transformative action in which energy is provided for needed body processes and activities. Type 2 diabetes mellitus is when target tissues, particularly liver, muscles, fat, and adipose, and insulin do not work correctly together. All insulin is necessary as a hormone for the body, and you cannot live without it. So there are a lot of hidden changes that happen in the body long before a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Insulin is the hormone regulating the blood sugar, and food is converted into blood sugar. And as the blood sugar enters the blood vessels, it triggers the pancreas to release insulin. Insulin works as a blood sugar key to open body cells and create energy. Now, let's take a little bit closer look at insulin. Now, what does insulin do? Well, the role of insulin is, is also to direct the liver to hold on to blood sugar for later use. Blood sugar goes into tissue cells and bloodstream levels fall, and that alerts the insulin to also lower too. Those decreased insulin levels trigger the liver to let go of blood sugar stores for continuous energy, even if someone has not eaten for some time. That is a process when everything was working efficiently with your blood sugars. Now, what happens when the body changes its use of insulin? Well, this coordinated process can easily get a little bit out of whack. Now, you can have too much blood sugar that comes into blood vessels and the pancreas responds by sending out more insulin to get the blood sugar into the tissue cells. But over time, this can create insulin resistance, and this happens when cells stop reacting to that hormone, the hormone insulin. Now, the pancreas still, though, it's doing its job. It continues to produce insulin to attempt to make cells respond, and ultimately, the pancreas is no longer able to keep up, and the blood sugar just continues to rise. And when you have too much blood sugar in the blood vessels, it's very harmful to the body and needs to be transferred into cells as quickly as possible. And there's too much insulin. And that also signals the liver and the muscles to keep blood sugar stores. And when these tissues are at their capacity, the liver sends the remaining blood sugar to fat cells to be kept as body fat. And this contributes to weight gain. And one of the more severe consequences of this can be type 2 diabetes mellitus. What type of factors lead to type 2 diabetes mellitus? So what could be causing this potentially to happen? Well, it is the most common type of diabetes mellitus in the United States, with almost 90 to 95% of cases diagnosed. So it is primarily with adults, but the numbers are starting to increase with teenagers and children who also are obese. Uh, obesity is a major factor. Uh, these individuals have higher insulin and impaired suppression of blood sugar production from the liver, leading to high blood sugar levels and higher than normal insulin levels. The type of obesity, though, also plays a role and it's those with the central or upper body obesity having the highest risk for type 2 diabetes mellitus. So the waist circumference and waist to hip ratio are both surrogate quantifiers and equal well linked to insulin resistance. So it's a lack of physical activity as well. And there is also a potential strong genetic factor uh, there is a genetic susceptibility from several genetic and gain disease causing influences that have been linked to advancing impairment of the beta cells 
function in those with type 2 diabetes mellitus. And the beta cells are the cells within the pancreas that help with creating the hormone insulin. So what are some of the consequences of having type 2 uh, diabetes mellitus? Well, one of those consequences is obviously the adipose or the fat tissue showing an insufficient reaction to the insulin. And that leads to pancreas releasing excessive amounts of insulin in an effort to lower the high levels of blood glucose in the bloodstream. The other types of consequences are that the normal cellular responses are disrupted, resulting in what's known as a lower nitric oxide production. Now, why nitric oxide is important is that it has a strong influence on the blood vessels by relaxing and opening in them. So it's the tightening and opening of these vessels. And when there is not enough of that to be produced, that means that these blood vessels will start to tighten, they'll have greater resistance. And that creates a second path, um, or there's also a second pathway that adds to more blood vessel tightening. So there's two things that are going on that create our blood vessels to begin to tighten. And both of these processes can contribute to a buildup of atherosclerotic plaque in the arteries. And insulin then acts as a signal to hinder the breakdown of lipids or, you know, a variety of what's known as fatty compounds. And with insulin resistance, it brings about an increased breakdown of fatty compounds. And therefore, there's more free fatty acids, a type of lipid, being released. And the lipids end up changing these free fatty acids into triglycerides and very low density lipoproteins or elevated bad blood fat or a bad form of cholesterol. And that leads to the blood vessels pro having problems and also leads to abnormal blood clotting. So with all that being said, with that going on, there are so many chronic complications that come along with type 2 diabetes mellitus. And I'm just going to kind of run through these you can, and it's literally, this is almost going from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet, that you would have dizziness and fainting through autonomic neuropathy, brain tissue death, bleeding, strokes uh, from microvascularization tears, the, uh, leading to retinopathy, cataracts, glaucoma within the eyes. You can have heart disease and heart attacks. We just talked about those plaques in the arteries, high blood pressure, peripheral vascular disease in the legs. You can end up with slowed stomach emptying, diarrhea and constipation, urinary retention and infection, chronic kidney disease, neuropathy ends up reducing perceptions of pain in people, which, you know, if people end up with foot ulcers, they can become gangrious and infectious um, on the of infections on the feet as well. So what sort of things could you do ahead of time to prevent you from even having type 2 diabetes mellitus? Because I think prevention is the most important thing. And the first thing is to actually, you know, know what risk factors are for having pre-diabetes. And they are the risk factors the same with diabetes, which is obesity, lack of physical activity, and so forth. Know the risk factors uh, by also speaking to your healthcare provider and asking to get the free test in order to see if you do have potentially pre-diabetes or even type 2 diabetes mellitus. They will check for a three-month overall blood sugar, known as an A1C. They will also get a fasting blood glucose after eight hours of not eating or drinking. Or they could get you uh, to eat 75 uh, grams of glucose or sugar and have you take a test to see how your ins you respond to that with your insulin two to three uh, two hours after that um, has been consumed. And if you have two of those th three tests showing as positive, then you are confirmed for prediabetes, depending on those numbers. 
But the good news is pre-diabetes can be reversed with lifestyle modifications. So think about the reasons and what could inspire a change um, in you, your diet, physical activity. Somebody told me that just having um, somebody let them know that, you know, you're just going to be, you know, um, having parts, you're going to, you know, go by parts, um, you know, through amputations was enough to kind of inspire them. But it is good to kind of do a loss of about 5 to 10% of body weight. Um, that has a chance to help with insulin resistance and decrease blood sugar in the bloodstream. Meals should be around eating healthy, whole, fresh foods and be something that can be easy to stick to for lifelong well-being. Uh, the Mediterranean style diet is one that has been recommended currently. Um, that's going to be uh, fruits and veg and nuts and whole grains, a little bit of lean proteins and seeds. The other type of things to think about with prevention is to stay active and have a daily goal for healthier movement. Um, the more consistent you are with being physically active, the faster it can help you be, have it as a habit. Make sure you measure your goals, the weight loss, your food choices, activity, so that you can see progress being made to help stay motivated and continue to build on that. And studies actually do show that those who track actually succeed better. You can do it in a paper calendar, you can do it on an app. I would also share with others that you are trying to go on this journey, letting them know what your goals are, what's being set, asking people for support is important. Plan other activities like go walking in a park, maybe rather than eating out. And you know, there's so many online communities that you can find people who are also, you know, going through the same and needing to support, as well as all sorts of things through uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have lots of resources as well. So the good thing is that just introducing small actions towards goals each week and begin to make those a lifelong habit of living well. So some things that I would recommend right here at the end is make sure you check daily on your feet for any cuts, blisters, red spots or swelling. You know, get do daily dental care with brushing and flossing. You know, a lack of sleep and bad sleep quality can result in a change in metabolic and hormonal processes. That can also lead to the development of type 2 diabetes mellitus. So make sure you get good 7 hours of sleep at night. And we talked a little bit about the Mediterranean diet. That also has a benefit of glycemic control. Along pairing that with physical activity. Look for ways for stress management. And remember the ABCs for type 2 diabetes mellitus. Check your A1C your blood pressure, uh, your cholesterol, and stop smoking. Thank you so much, and I appreciate everything.